my friends have finally realised what a junk journal is and now they all want one. Some of them like them so much they want to give them as gifts to their friends too. And I made the seriously bad mistake of telling them all that I would make them. So now I need to make lots of mini junk journals that are super cute, fast, cheap and easy. So today we're testing out a design to make one of these. This is a mini junk journal with cards front and back and it opens with accordion style pages that are covered with beautiful ephemera and lots of lovely bits of decoration. I've got a snippet here, I've got journal spots, I've got a pocket at the back here and I've got collage on the back of each of the pages too. Journal spot here, poem here, just lots of texture and places to tuck things. And this is made from, apart from the covers, just one sheet of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. And the wavy stitching that you saw is because this is a collaboration for fast flow stitching. So I'm delighted to be participating in an amazing collaboration organised by Louise and with all of these great channels. So check them out, they're linked in the description box down below. And I also, of course, have the process steps which are in Pinterest along with about 35 others. So the first thing we want to do to make one of these is take a large piece of paper and tear it down. And although you could use any large piece of paper, I'm going to use a single sheet of 12 by 12 because I've got width then that I can glue onto each piece to make this accordion style inside set of pages. So the brief from Louise was to do fast flow stitching with an autumn theme, so an autumnal theme. So I have pulled out, as she said, a number of different pieces of paper to choose from that are in the colours of green and beautiful oranges, those sort of deep reds. They don't have to be botanical pieces, but I wanted some with those gorgeous colours. So I felt that any of these worked. These are from a K&Co stack that I have. I just need to choose one of these to make my pages from. I think I'm going to go with, I might go with this one. Isn't that gorgeous? So we need to tear this down, but I do need to do a bit of measuring. And because your front and back covers might be a different size from mine, mine are, I think, standard index card size. So that's nearly six inches, which I believe is 15 centimetres width and these are each about four inches high which is just ten and a half centimeters yours could be any shape or size so i want to explain what size piece of paper you want for the inside when these are torn we get these beautiful peaks and troughs in the papers and lovely tatty edges and this means that we need a sort of core piece to be a certain height so that we can tolerate some extra height or depth as we tear. Let me try and show you by doing. So if my front, let's pick one from the stack that I've been making. These have been, I think I've made some of these on my channel recently. Let's pick something for the front with, that's got some nice autumnal colours. It's a bit plain. Some of these still need sewing. I like the colours here. Let's let's use those two. One for the front and one for the back. And these are just pieces of 160 GSM paper which I have then covered with dyed paper and collaged. And I want, let's say this is going to be the front, my torn pieces of paper to be about eight centimetres tall plus any of the ups and downs that come as we tear. And if I do that, it means that the piece of paper once torn will still be broadly within the height of my cover and that will protect the inner pages. So if I have 10 and a half centimetres height here, I'm going to make a mark at about the eight centimetre point. Let me just do that with a ruler, then you can see. So at about eight centimetres, 
and then I'm going to do some tearing and I will allow this piece of paper to be torn at more than eight centimetres but not not a huge amount more then it doesn't peek out of the top of the card at the front and the back of the little mini junk journal that we're making. So I press down, fold and press down at one end and then I fold and press down at the other and I'm going to start and finish roughly at the same height and I'm just going to let the paper tear a bit. In fact I want some ups and downs as we tear because it gives it some interest. So let's have a go at the first tear. It's fun this once you get going. Tear and I want it to be up and down and tatty so I might have to pull towards me, maybe pull away and I'm basically adding a centimetre or two, no more, of height in the waviness. So we're just getting a bit of interest going. It's something a bit different. And as you come to the end, just finish off at that eight centimetre point, about there. So I've got something which has got ups and downs in it. I'm going to do exactly the same again. And I need this to be not much more than the 10 centimetres, it's 10 and a half centimetres full height, my little mini junk journal, 10 and a half here. If I've got an extra bit pointing out here, I need my core area to be about eight, I can have another centimetre or two to the sides. So I'll use my little board here. If I start at eight there, where I finished, I've got a centimetre or so sticking out there. I'm going to make a mark at eight centimetres, fold it back, just make a little bit of a crease at one end and a little bit of a crease at the other and then I'm going to do the same tearing job which might mean I get quite a bit of extra height if I allow it to go over where the peaks are already. So I'll just bit of tearing, maybe a bit softer on the curves this time. I just don't want it to be straight, I want it to be intentionally wavy. It's looking good, tear, tear, down we go. Another nice tatty sheet. I'll do the same again with the third one. I want three of these pieces like this. So we'll go again, start at eight centimetres do a fold. Makes a change doesn't it from trimming or straight lines. Press down at one end, press down at the other and then a bit of unruly tearing. So we're going either side of what would have been the crease but not hugely far away. So now I have three pieces of torn paper and I'm ready to do the folding of the pages. And the first thing we want to do is fold the front piece and create a little flap here that will glue onto the inside cover. So let's do that. The flap, I'm going to use the piece with the straight edge. You don't have to, you could start with a, a wavy edge. In fact, if you wanted to, you could make this tatty as well. I just choose to use it with a straight edge. We want to create a flap so that the pattern side is showing and this little flap here I add about three and a half centimetres so that we've got plenty to glue and be firm and strong as it sticks to the inside cover. So we're on step two, we're going to do the folding, create a front flap on the first piece with about three and a half centimetres. I'll just use my little green mat, one, two, three, about there, and fold, and in fact at this point I know that I want that to actually be folded forwards. I now need this piece to be just a bit less than the width of my front cover. So again I can't give you precise numbers because you're front covers, your size of journals might vary, but I have found that if I fold what remains 
in two, I get a sheet that's about the right size. So I've folded that in half. That is actually going to be folded back when it's inside. So I've got a flap here, something to decorate, something to decorate here. And now I'm going to take my next little piece and basically do the same again. So I need a flap that will overlap with this because I want to glue on and extend it. So I'll go to about three centimetres, three and a half centimetres again. Fold at that point. There it is. We'll do the gluing in a minute. We'll just get the folding done, I think. And then I'm going to fold this in half because when I've folded it in half, as we said, it's not too wide for the front of the cover. In fact, I think I will glue it on and then I know what I'm doing with all of these pieces. So here's my first piece. Grab some glue and I think I'll use a stick because it's less watery. And I need to just glue this onto here. So, see there's plenty of width here to take the glue. That just goes on there. You want to get it pretty neat so that this piece of paper isn't squiffy and going up and down. So about there I think. I'm going to line up that straight line edge here on my squares just to roughly check that this is going in the right direction. Roughly positioned right. So I've now got an extended page. We're doing very well to there. And now I just want a back piece. So at the back of this, I just want an extra bit to stick on the inside cover. So I'm going to do another three and a half centimetre flap. Let's measure that off. One, two, three and a half squares. I can manage that. Fold that. Bit of glue on there. I'll get that on. Keeping the pattern towards me at all times. And then this piece of paper is just going to get torn off, so I will I'll fold it back and tear it. And the back here is going to be stuck to the inside cover at the back. And that gives me enough real estate to add lots of lovely goodies. And it's just going to be absolutely beautiful. How easy was that? So the next thing we want to do is some collage on the back. And this really is fun because it's a little bit random, albeit I need to stay within the brief of those autumnal colours for this collaboration. And I want to lay down a map with those orange, red and green tones and then add a couple of these bits of ephemera, particularly one of them before I sew. So the key to this is to get going with the collage first. So I'll open it up and where should we start? We'll start on the right here. I've pulled out a few bits of scraps Hopefully in those tones, those colours, that's a bit pink. I don't think it really matters too much. But I'm going to get going just sticking down. Now you might have said, why didn't you? Let's try some packaging paper. You might have said, why didn't you do just collage on the back and then rip it? Well, I think you get a slightly different effect if you go for the collage now. And... I like the random element that appears. So let's just do a bit of gluing. The other thing I like is, and this wouldn't happen if you collaged on the back of the big 12 by 12 first and then tore it down. I actually like a little bit of the collage paper on the back here peeping out just a little bit here. So I'm going to go over in some of the areas. The other thing I would say is don't worry if you, when you collage, 
you end up with some bits of white showing because what you can do is fill in with bits of paint later if you want to. I also think it just a tiny bit of white peeping through doesn't look too bad. This is going to be an interesting one for on camera because I'm going to keep sliding across. So I'm just picking, oh look, I've scribbled on this one. I'm just going to pick some of the colours and fill in the gaps. I'm going to go over where our creases are for the pages. I don't mind that at all. I will do a bit of refolding when I've done my collage. I'm just going to go quickly and add lots of lovely colours. How about that one? A bit of that. Oops, wrong end. Ooh. Maybe a bit here. Break that up. This is going to create a lovely, lovely landscape of, of backing for the ephemera that we add. And when I look at some of these, I don't really look at the image always. I sometimes just look for the colours. I'm going to go quite quickly. I'd probably do slightly smaller pieces if I was doing this without filming. And on each of them, I think it helps if you do the under over technique. So don't always glue down right to the edge. Try and get it horizontal ish. There we are. That's good. I'm literally just working across, adding some little bits. So that was from the first prototype. Plain pieces doesn't all need to be patterned and clashy. Go, doesn't take too long. Oh, lovely music paper! How about that? Now, need to be careful. This is the front, so this is my back flap. I don't actually need to collage the back flap, that's just going to be glued down. So I'll just Take that off there. Certainly don't want to waste my music paper on a flap that's going to get stuck to the inside cover and not seen. That would be a waste, wouldn't it? Oh, it's coming together. What do we think? I'm excited already. I like to just kind of pick up a bit, see where there's a gap, see where it needs some texture and maybe a little bit of pattern or image. Don't think too hard. And if any of the pieces of paper come too high and above the line of our cover, maybe a bit of book page, it doesn't matter. We can always tear it off, can't we? Let's go that way, I think. I love the scrappiness and the texture of this and also the surprises that we get. Let's try and go under there. Just as you're looking along it, you don't really know what's going to come next. Maybe a bit more green. So Louise said, those colours of autumn. And I'm really excited to see what everybody else in this collab does. We did something like this a year ago. So I kicked off this fast flow stitching collab with a very similar group of people. We have a couple of new channels playing along, people playing along this time. So Shinuki and Margaret Miller, who I'm sure you know, uh, but it's broadly the same group. And maybe it's going to be an annual thing. How about that? Shall we do that? Now I've got two lots of book pages. Let's break it up. I don't want to cover up too much of my green. A bit more green over there. This is probably the most time consuming part. Once this is done, you really are on the home straight. Can't resist a bit more. Butterflies pro probably summery, but I don't mind because I like the colour. Get a bit of that on. I don't want too many pieces because I don't want this to be too thick when we come to the sewing. 
but you can go a little bit wild. That will probably be too high, but I can always bring it down. So I've mostly got got it covered. I might be orange on that. A bit of that up there. Don't want to cover up too much of that. Maybe a bit of that. I really am speedy today. So if you've seen any of the other videos, they're all sort of being posted at within a range of dates. So they come out on different days, but leave me a comment down below if you've seen anyone else's and are we excited about this? Good fun, isn't it? It's a bit pink, but I like it. And that can go down there. And I may need to call a halt in a second. That's gonna join up with where it came from. Okay, maybe just a, a little bit more green down here. So on the process step, shall we have a little look where we've got to? Collage the back of the long folded strip and crisp up the folds once we have done it. Don't worry about going over the top and the bottom. I will call a halt there. I know I've got gaps, but what I would do is just put a bit of paint on those later on. I'm not going to worry at this stage. I've broadly got my collage done. So let's just recrease so we're confident where our page folds are going to be. So I've recreased my folds. I've still got my flap at the front and my pages are folded. And we've got collage along the back. I think that's upside down, that music sheet, but I don't really mind. And plenty of this is in the colours of orange and green. And it is super tatty and I love it. So I'm going to add a bit of ephemera and this piece I want to add before we do any of the fast flow stitching. So the thing to do with this project is remember to add your ephemera at the right time. So for the back, I want to add a little poem. I've just got in my own handwriting a piece of John Keats poetry. I'm going to add that on the back. So have a think where you want to put these items. So I've got a space here maybe and a space here. So I think I'm going to glue my poem on there. I know I lose a bit of my collage, but you can't really plan this in so much detail. Maybe actually I'll lose my butterfly if I do that. I'm going to put a poem there and I will be adding one of my little over page pockets, but I'm going to just make life simple and glue that on later. So I don't need to put it on yet. I'm going to have my poem on there. And I think what I want to do is make sure I've got a little bit of writing space. So I've got some little squares of scrapbook paper that I've already torn down. Well, I've torn them down and then added a bit of an interesting corner. I don't think I want whole ones of these. So maybe I can add a bit of space to write there. So I'm going to glue that on. And maybe a bit more, maybe even just a quarter could go on there. That looks upside down too, maybe like that. So I've got a poem, a couple of spaces to write. And that means we have done step three. And now I can move to the front decorating over the top of the scrapbook paper pattern. So again, let's find some bits of ephemera to add. And I thought I'd add a, an envelope. So I've made a really small envelope and I'm going to put that towards the front of this little mini junk journal. So I'll put some glue just on the back of the flap. So I'm only putting it here on the flap and I'll put that down on the page and that will be able to open still and we can put things in it. So I am going to sew over the top of here so I want to put my envelope in first and I think I'm also going to add a spot to journal. Maybe I'll put him there and it might have him peeping over the top a bit. 
It's very quick and random and fluid, this project. What do you think? And you can obviously go to town in adding as much decoration as you like. And I think I will add a little pocket on the back piece here. So I've got my little tub of botanical images. I found one at the front that looks the right sort of colours. Again, it's something I want to be able to sew in the right way. So I'll put some glue on three sides just to stick it on. And then that can go on there. Not too high so it doesn't peep out of the top of the cover. How are we doing? We've got plenty now, I think, before we sew. And at this stage, what I would do is run it through my sewing machine and add the fast flow stitching. Now, fast flow stitching is all about not particularly sewing in straight lines. So let me show you what I've done on one of these that I prepared just a little bit earlier. So this is one that I did collage and sew earlier, and I've done it again on beautiful autumnal patterned papers. I'll show you where and how I sew. So this is the flap at the front, and I just start and I go all the way along, sometimes following the ups and downs of the edge of the paper. So I catch the inside of that envelope flap, and obviously that's going to sit down there. And I just keep going. So you can see on these we've got two rows of stitches. I've varied them, so I've added some zigzag here. You could add a third if you wanted to. And I've gone over those journal spots, which I think makes it really interesting. So you can see on this one I added just a little bit more decoration. But I think it's lovely that we've got the stitching over the top of the journal spots. And for the pocket at the end that I added, at that point I just go around the bottom of the pocket, I come back on myself and then I head back off along the bottom and I put some wavy lines in when I got confident, I added a bit more undulation in the stitches, but nothing straight and that's what's great about this fast flow stitching project, it's just so much fun. And that gives us something that we can now go back to and add just a bit more decoration before we glue it into the front and back cover. So I've got the front and back covers that I chose before. This lovely bird, beautiful yellows. We've got some autumnal images on the right and some orangey green tones for the back. Literally just lightweight cardstock really. And I'm going to glue this in and as I glue it in, I feel that all of this just starts to come together and it sort of makes sense where the pages are and what else we need to add as decoration. So I want some glue on that front flap and the positioning is everything on this. Take my bird, turn that over so I can see exactly where this is going to go and sit the pages on top and you might find that we've got a little bit excess above and below. Either leave it or you can tear it off. But what we do want is that edge here to be quite flush. There we go. And it's all about the glue on the flap. And now I want to put glue on here and just put this one on top. So I've got my front flap in and I need the back flap that has the pocket. Remember we sewed around that. Just going to cover this all with glue, plenty of glue and glue that in. And obviously we couldn't have sewn that pocket in after we've glued this to the back. Now I can just position that on top as neatly as I can over the same space as the front. And I quite like the fact we've got a bit of the middle of our sandwich showing. It just feels nice. So now we can finish off a little bit more of that decoration. Maybe just push it down. And it's much easier to think about what we're doing now that it's all been glued together. So I'm just going to add a little bit of decoration. And all of these are really just suggestions. There's no formula now at this stage. I've got some autumnal snippets that I made a while ago. 
lovely colours. I've got tea cards on these of rabbits. I've got some mushrooms there. I've got a little squirrel. Should we take a little bit of that? In fact, the colour goes really well with the pattern. I'm going to have a bit of that. So I just add that to the bottom. There we go, like that. And maybe a little bit of decadent foiled washi just to bring it together. Up there. A bit to hold it down. A bit there. How about some tickets? These are, I think, Pink Monarch prints. Is it Pink Monarch prints? Porch Monarch? I'll have a look. I don't want to lose the numbers, but I might just have to. I don't want to add too much either, because the idea to this is that whoever uses it has space to add what they want. Obviously, they could always glue over the top. Maybe put that there. I can't resist a stamp and a paint. That looks very plain. So I just might add one of those. Just a gentle wash. And here's my little pocket, so maybe I can add a little postcard in there. And on the back, what can we add? I want to add one of my overpage pockets. So these are made a while ago. There'll be a video on my channel for these. Oh, I've got one with a lovely mushroom. One with a bird, that's quite dark. I think I'll take the mushroom and I'm just going to, I don't want to cover that up, so I'm just going to get that on there, push that down and then I've got space to put things in here. And to finish this off, just to make it perfect as a gift, I would just put it inside a handmade envelope. So I've chosen a piece of paper here from a children's book that also has some of the green on it. It's got some poetry here which I, I just really love and this just is the perfect gift, a mini junk journal. Don't forget to check out all the videos in this collaboration, they're linked down below. And if you have enjoyed this then how about having a go at a junk journal? I have a video showing how to do it start to finish from last year's Fast Flow Stitching collaboration. I hope to see you soon.